everybody welcome back to my channel today i have some plant mail that i'm gonna open for you guys so i thought i would hop over here and do that and um yeah just show you what i got so this is from two places where um i have not shot before one being tropical plants florida which is a shop on etsy the other being it says botanica united states plant shop um, somebody posted her on Instagram. I'll link her Instagram uh, if I can remember. I'll probably put in the title what the exact name of her website is. But yes, these are this is my first time shopping with these two places, as I said. So I'm gonna go right ahead and start opening. So I'll start with the one from. I hope the kids' TV isn't too loud in the background. But if it is, apologies. It'll just have to be. I need to do this while they're distracted. So this is from Tropical Plants, Florida. I was in one of the Facebook plant groups. I can't remember exactly uh, which one. And somebody had asked what were some online plant shops. People started listing things and this was one of them on there. So I went to check it out. So this here you can see is what the package looks like. You have some tissue paper in here and it is wrapped in some wet um, tissue paper. So it's like this here. Wrapped, wrapped in some wet tissue paper. And it's kind of really wet. Okay, so here's the first one put this around here to protect the stems, I'm guessing. Cut that off. Without cutting the plant. Don't cut the plant, no. <laughs> okay. So, this, actually I like that she did that. Um, so this is it right here. This is uh, Burl Marks. It has one, two, three, four leaves, and I can see one, two, three more coming in. So that is really nice. Um, I try to give, I'm trying to be more descriptive with like my impressions and come, and I like to do unboxings because they give people an idea of, first of all, where they can shop online if they already, you know, weren't aware of places where they could go. But also, people like to, oh, it's a whole bunch of little babies down in here. People also like to, I think, see what they would be getting. Because sometimes you can't really tell from a picture. And unfortunately, some people are, um, they're not honest with their pictures. So that's why I like to do unboxing. So I'm trying to be like descriptive, first impressions, stuff like that. Excuse, it looks like I'm sweating, but I just washed my hair, so it's still wet. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off because that was very wet. And there is a portion right here, not major, that looked like it might've had like a little bit of a root, but it was mushy. This root right here, that you can see looks like an aerial root. It's pretty, not like a whole lot. I hope I'm gonna clip it, but it is mushy on the end there. And then this aerial root is broken, as you can see. Um, but other than that, I definitely feel like this is a good cutting. If look, oh, see, these depths. The um, okay, I'll get to that. Let me do the positive first. Look at the end of that with all of those little babies down there, all those new growth points. So this is definitely a very nice cutting. It's one little brown leaf there. Uh, take that off, that has some brownie. The only thing that I would say, and a lot of people make that mistake, is the wet paper towel thing. I understand damp, this is really wet, like I can squeeze the water out of here. And as you can see, what it started to do was to cause rot 
on one of the aerial roots that are present. Um, so it's my understanding that cuttings that are not rooted, like there's some aerial roots on here. This is not a rooted cutting, which I knew um, that it would not be. However, it's my understanding when you have a cutting that is not rooted, when you ship it, there's no need to put like the wet paper towel thing. I was under the impression that if it's a rooted cutting, like something shipped bare root, you want to put a damp cloth around the root so they don't completely dry out. So that's one of um, the things I think that people kind of misstep with. Like even if you're going to put it on there, don't make it so wet um, because that can happen. But overall, I'm definitely very happy with this cutting. Um, it's definitely going to make a nice little, a nice starter plant. I'm excited for these leaves down here to start opening up. I'm gonna put it in some water and place it um, in a nice bright spot on my shelf, but everything looks well. And I would definitely buy from them again. The shipping, if I'm remembering correctly, was fine. It wasn't, um, I wouldn't say it was delayed or anything like that. But the one thing with um, this, this one was not priced bad at all compared to what I've seen. But what gets me every time I see these is that I saw this plant, a big pot of it, because I remember the leaf shape. Um, this was like sometime last spring in Tops, which is a supermarket where I live. And um, I didn't get it because I had already gotten something else. But I'm like, I know that's something because I, I remember the shape of the leaf, but I couldn't remember the name of it. So anyway, I went home, looked it up, saw what it was, and I um, I sent my husband back to try to get it, but it was gone by the time he went back. So I don't know. This brings me to another thing I want to talk about too, but I'll get to opening the next one. Well, kind of quickly as I'm doing it. What do you all think of the difference between um, shopping, plant shopping now, um, amid the quarantine uh, compared to shopping online previously for plants. I've seen within the groups that I'm in on Facebook, I've seen two different thought processes or two different um, arguments that people have. One is that people, meaning those that are selling plants, know that the majority of people are obviously quarantined across the, you know, around the country and they can't get out to where they would normally shop for plants. So here's this one, that's the packaging on that. And um, this, I'm really excited about this plant, just to cut myself off. This is a wishlist plant for sure. This will by far be my most expensive plant that I own, like my most expensive single plant that I own. So I can already see it is wrapped very well which I was certainly happy about because this is going to be like a little baby for me. <laughs> All right, so bubble wrap. It's not a baby. Oh, okay, my daughter is helping me. All right, so it's stapled at the top. You can see right here. So it was in paper, bubble wrap and more paper very securely wrapped this i would say that shipping took a while but it was an expected while because she had everything very clear on her website oh my gosh Ooh. she had everything very clear you can see she taped it inside the paper to hold it steady inside the package you see that down there definitely a 10 for wrapping and then there's cotton around the leaves oh goodness okay so let's see um like i was saying she had it on her thing on her page in the description that it would take seven to ten business days to you know basically a process before it would be shipped so that was expected this looks really good now there is a boo-boo on one of the leaves but that is not a point taken off from her 
because I wanted to have this plant. It's a wishless plant of mine and the prices on it are usually steep. So I bought one that was on clearance because it had a boo-boo on the leaf, but I was okay with that. And so that was to be expected. So then you can see here, she has like this little plastic bag right here around the bottom of the roots. And then she had that taped around in place. So it's definitely wrapped very well. There's paper around the bottom. It is moist, but not sopping wet like the other one was. Okay, so this is actually, ooh, let me catch that. This is actually wrapped in Spangle Moss. I can't remember from the description if it said that it was gonna be wrapped in the Spangle. I know it said that it was gonna be shipped bare root for sure. Okay, these roots, just giving them a once over. One is broken. Um, so there is that, but that can happen. Other than that, let me show you. This is the root system right here. This root in here, um, that had a little, little soft piece on the end. Um, this one here is broken. It's like snapped right there. But like I said, what's the matter? You see it too? That's um, to be expected. This has one, two, three, four, five. Expect some damage when you're ordering plants online because they're being shipped, they're in a box, they're getting tossed around, all that. So it should just be expected. This is the leaf that I knew was going to be damaged as well as a little yellowing on this tip. But like I said, um, I did get this from the clearance markdown section of her site and she was very descriptive with her pictures and so i knew exactly what i was getting i'm very happy with this as, as you can clearly see nice established roots so i can get this potted up i might put in some water for a little um or i might just pot it right up i'm not sure yet but um i mean i guess i could i'm gonna pot it up yeah I'm going to pot it up, so I'll probably do a separate video on that. I'm not an like, expert at all on soil mixes. I just know the mix of soil that I use, and it's done well for me. So I use the same soil for pretty much everything. But I'm very excited about this one. This is definitely one of my top wish list plants. Look at that leaf. It's so pretty. The leaves are nice and firm. No signs of any bugs or anything like that, which has happened to me before ordering online. But not here. I'm very excited about this one. This looks so cool. And I'm going to have to get a nice spot for it up here. Because here you can see my, um, this is my Gloriosa. And I'm going to have to find a spot up here for this guy. And I don't want to say it wrong. I think this is the Anth Anthurium clarinervum. I'll put it on the screen, but um, I need to find a spot for it up there. So here is this one, and it came in really good shape. My husband is creeping out from the corner to see what I got. But yeah, so I'm very happy with that one. So I would definitely say to rate both of these. I think they did excellent jobs with packaging, especially the one that I just showed you. Um, excellent job with the packing. The shipping was as described. My only negative for the Florida uh, Tropicals, the, well, the Etsy shop, is the cloth that was around the base were, was way too wet. And I don't think that it was necessary because the plant didn't have any roots anyway. So it just caused some slight rot issues. So just to show you um, again, these are my two new plants and I'm very excited with these. I'm gonna go head and get this one potted up and I'm going to get this one into a glass of water and we're going to go from there but I just wanted to talk a little bit about um what I started to say earlier how shopping online for plants has changed um since everything is going on with quarantine and such and like I said I think it's two different schools of thought right so there's a one group of people who say 
that plant sellers are basically gouging right now because they know that people can't get plants any other way and so they're taking advantage of that and they're marking the prices way up and then you have people who feel that the other side um people feel that um the prices are you know basically boutique prices like the prices are pretty standard for online and what i mean by boutique prices is like if you go to like local nurseries um some not the bigger one but like the bigger ones with the smaller owned businesses a plant will carry a certain price versus if you go to a big box store excuse me it'll be a totally different price so i kind of fall in the middle not really in the middle i think that people are more confused who don't normally shop online my son's being silly people who don't normally shop online for plants and who don't normally shop at non-big box stores i don't think they know what those prices on the plants usually are so for example if you're used to shopping at big lots walmart even uh trader joe's like at your supermarkets or um lowe's and home depot you're used to getting like a big pot like this one right here is from Lowe's and this was there babe how much was this 29 25 so it was it was under $30 this one right here and this piece I added but it started it came this tall and it's in like the big gallon jug versus I have a plant over there uh, I don't really want to turn the camera but it's a half the size of this it's about like this tall I got it from Plants Arena and it was the same price. So I said that to say, you're used to getting like this big box store price. It's going to be a shock for you when you go online and you're like, wait, well, I can get that here. You know, I get that at Lowe's for this price or I can get that. So I get that kind of, um, I get that when people are like, okay, this is ridiculous. But it's a couple things to note about that. Number one, when you go to big box stores, it's like luck of the draw. Um, you literally... Cause before everything happened i was one of those people like every other day i was just going to check like i was just popping to go check and that's kind of what you have to do you have to keep going by and checking to happen across you know certain plants certain nicer plants kind of more rare plants um but you you would just have to keep checking whereas if you go online you know you want a specific plant you find that plant and then you know you pick what you feel is the, the who has the best price and then you buy it so that's the difference and i think people need to kind of adjust their mindset when it comes to that of course it's always going to be cheaper at a big box store that's just the nature of the type of store that that is but um it just depends on really where you want to spend your money now i'm not saying that you know you should go spend like triple the price on a plant because you know it's a small business or it's a local business or this or that i think you should buy plants the plants that you want um buy them however you can that's within your budget so if there could be a plant like there's a plant that i want right now the um different bakia reflector that's gotten really popular but i know that those different different bakias are usually at lowe's at home depot and everything i'm not able to go out there right now so i'm waiting waiting on that versus you can see them online and people have like a little four inch pot and it's $36. Whereas if I were to, were to find it at Lowe's or Home Depot or any other, other big box stores, it would be max for that big gallon, um, like 10 inch bucket that they, they usually put those in. It could be like $24. So I get it when you're used to um, purchasing, not even 24, I have another big bucket, um, different bucket. I think it's one of the snows and it was $14.99 or $16.99 or something at Wegmans. So I get that, but you kind of have to be realistic that it's not necessary that everybody is price gouging. It's just that pricing is different when you're A, a smaller business, and B, you know, you can't compete with big box store prices. That's just never going to happen. So that's what I wanted to say about that. Because I saw a lot of people, like, really upset about it. Like, oh, you know, they're ripping people off. This is ridiculous. I can find this here. I can find that there. I'm one of the people, it's quarantine, it's quarantine. I'm not going out. Um, you know, we go out for, obviously we have two small kids, so we'll go out for the necessities that we need only when we absolutely need them. But we're not out like browsing stores.
for plants and stuff like that. Even if, you know, we were to go to the grocery store. So far, we've been using Instacart. But even if my husband was to go to the grocery store, he's not going to go like, oh, let me go look through the plants. Because he has gone like, you know, in the beginning he went and then we started doing Instacart. He didn't go like browsing through plants and well, let me stop here, let me stop there. Because to me, that defeats the whole purpose. But that's a whole other conversation um, between what people think is a necessity. Because in one of the plant rooms I'm in, someone was saying that plants are a necessity because it's a part of her uh, self-care or something. I mean, I get it. Um, the plants mean different things to different people, but you can't just think singularly about yourself. You have to think about other people during this time. Also, when you're out and when you have only a certain amount of people left in the store at a time, you have to kind of like, you know what I mean? Get in, get what you absolutely have to get and then go. But anyway, another conversation, another conversation. But I think people, if they just realize that, they would know that, okay, you can't expect to go and find big box store prices online. Now you can find some prices um, online that you will find in the big box stores if you shop online at those big box stores. Also, um, if you buy smaller, um, smaller plants like what I pay for this one which is not a lot um, I'm not gonna say the price because people get weird people act weird when you say how much the, the plant was anyway this plant was not expensive at all what I paid for this cutting if I were to find this plant right here this burl marks in a store I could get I'm sure a whole pot for the same amount or maybe a couple of dollars more so that's kind of the trade-off. If you want to keep, you know, your price per plant that you're going to pay down to a certain level, which I think you should, excuse me, I think you definitely should with keeping it inside of your budget, expect to get a smaller, um, a smaller plant size where you are ordering online. Um, but yeah, I just need to talk about that because I've heard like, it's been like, I've seen literal arguments about it. And then one other thing I want to talk about that I really don't understand people's issue with is other people who don't normally sell any plants now taking this time to take advantage and sell plants. Um, I have an SD shop for my plants, which um, where I sell like plant cuttings from my personal collection and, you know, rooted cuttings, stuff that I've propagated, whatever, a couple other things. But it's not even up and running right now because, number one, I'm not going to be going back and forth out to the post office which is fine for other people who, you know, still have their, you know, business running and they have made their work and that's good for them. I just have decided not to make that a part of, you know, what I have going on right now. And, you know, like I said, that's totally fine, but I don't see a problem with, if you have plants that people want, you know, you can get some extra money or you trying to like supplement some input, whatever the reason is, which is no one's business. If you decide tomorrow you want to sell plants, why not sell the plants? I think people spend a little too much time. No. Mommy's almost done, okay? You can't, um. No more icy. People spend too much time worrying about what the other person is selling or what the other person has. I just don't get it. You, if you provide good quality and a good service, it doesn't matter if you're selling 100 plants or if you're selling five plants. People are going to go for the service. Because, hold on, finish, finish this. I've shot places where um, it's like popular name places. Charlotte. Big name places that where people would know the name right away. And I wasn't impressed at all with the plants. Like, I wasn't happy with the plants. But unless it's something like like outright really really bad i don't like to give like a negative review so i just wouldn't shop with that company again versus other companies that other people don't care for at all that they say they have such negative reviews for and everything i've shopped with them during this whole quarantine time two to three times and i've been happy <clears throat> overall each time so i think it just depends but Overall, I think people need to be a little more realistic with online shopping um, when it comes to plants. And it's just a couple tips and things that I would say to look out for. Number one, read the entire description. Some of them can seem long. It can seem like a bunch. 
read the description. You can't just go off the picture and think that you know what you're getting because some people post stylized pictures, unfortunately, meaning, you know, they have them like all like propped up and displayed nicely. They could be um, in a pot and this and that and people instinctively think what they see in that picture is what they're purchasing and that's not always the case. So always read, always read the entire description uh, so you know exactly what you're getting. And then look for pictures. People should have multiple pictures. Usually if the first picture is like really nice and stylized. Um, so usually when the first picture is like really stylized, like I just explained, swipe for more pictures. Cause normally once you swipe, like the pictures more towards the end will be what you're actually getting. Um, so what else? Read the descriptions, uh, look at all of the pictures and pay attention to their policies because as i said with this one she had it clearly stated that it took seven to seven to ten business days for shipping so you know that that was stated up front sometimes people figure okay i pay you know they took the money okay it'll be shipping in like the next day or two that's not always the case so instead of so you don't end up feeling like um, your shipping is delayed or the person is not doing what they should be doing just pay attention because a lot of times they will put that um, in the description as well what else about online plant shopping I'd say shop around shop around but verify the site there are a lot of unfortunately spam sites out there they take other people's pictures they post them for plants they don't have in their possession they're they're actually they're literally selling plants that they don't physically have and that's a problem because then they are taking your money and then going to scramble around to try to find um you know the plant that they've sold to you for the cheapest that they can to then send to you they don't have it in their possession they don't know the condition so there's a lot of stuff that goes into it so make sure that you vet out these sites look for reviews um and just see what people are saying. When I look at reviews, I also like to look for, um, I like to look for pictures, like when people post a picture so that you can see how the plants are actually showing up. Cause again, you can't really tell by, uh, you can't really tell by the photo all the time. And when you're looking at reviews, what I do, because sometimes people leave neg review, negative reviews for things that just don't make any sense to me. Like, uh, you know, the box was not even that, just something so random that it's not really something that the, the seller can control. Like, oh, I had it for a month and then it started to turn brown or this, this and that. So I look at what they're saying to make sure it's actually something that the seller can control or something that was in the seller's control and then I'll see like okay yeah that's a negative against them or that's more so error on the buyer's part or sometimes in shipping plants you're put taking a live thing you're closing it up in a box it's wrapped up in plastic and paper and it's going through the mail when you get it it's not gonna pop off the box picture ready it doesn't matter excuse me how well it's packaged it doesn't matter excuse me how um where it came from it just doesn't matter you have to bring them out you have to let it acclimate you have to let it breathe you have to you know if it's a cutting put it into some water if it's like a rooted um plant like the other one that i have you want to you know get it pot up get it set up let it sit out let it get used to your space and it, then it will perk up so you need to give it most places they'll say within 24 hours or 48 hours um you know to contact them with the issue because they know you have to give the chance the plant a chance to perk up um so i think that's pretty much uh the things i wanted to touch on that probably was a little bit around about like back and forth but those are just some of the things that i have been thinking about um just from what i've been seeing with the online shopping because people are like bashing a whole bunch of online stores that are not really um I don't think it's really warranted. It's just that people don't have the right mindset of shopping online, like boutique plant shops versus shopping greenhouses that sell online versus shopping big box stores. It's just different. But, um, you know, at the same time, like I said, you want to stay within your budget. So don't blow your budget paying for a plant 
just because it's a popular thing. You want to have it. Oh, that's one other thing that I want to talk about. This whole rare versus popular thing. Just because a plant is popular, meaning, obviously, a lot of people want it. Uh, it's been posted a lot on Instagram, so now everybody's out to find it. Everybody wants to get it. That does not make it rare, in my opinion. Um, to me, a rare plant would be something that, you know, it's only grown so many places. Like, it's hard to find in nature. To me, that's a rare plant. Not a plant that is flying off the shelves because everybody wants it. That doesn't make it rare. So, when you're shopping for plants online, um, especially, let's use Etsy for example, because I see this mostly on Etsy and eBay. It was, oh, rare philodendron, rare cacti, rare this, rare that. Rare has just become one of those blurb words um, that catches people's attention and gets you to look at the listing. And it's important to note that if the plant is actually a rare plant or not, because that'll factor into the price. You can be paying $50 for a $10 plant, but you're not paying any attention because they described it in all these flowering words. Oh, it's rare. It's this is that. And you're like, oh, cool. Thinking you got something like really special, which is still cool because you like it but not necessarily warranted the price markup because they called it rare and you didn't really know. And that's another thing about shopping online for plants or shopping for plants in general. Get a, get a bit of a general idea about um, the plants that you're gonna purchase. I wanna do a separate video about that, um, about like, I don't know, 10 things um, I know now that I didn't know when I started getting plants or something like that. I think I'll do something like that because I think that's good for um, people who are starting out or even getting more serious about collecting plants. But um, know a basic, you know, a basic framework about your plant, the plants that you're going to try to get. Because if you have a little bit of knowledge about the actual plant, you can't be, and this is where I'm talking about those sites that they just, they do take advantage and do the extra markup. Um, because a plant is popular and they're trying to like pass it off as a rare plant um they won't be able to basically like win you over with all of this exaggerated wording if you know oh, okay this plant you know it's grown out of florida it's this it's that like if you know a little bit and i'm talking about like a simple google search you'll be able to know like oh, okay they're just you know up in the price because of the popularity not necessarily for the actual rarity of the plant so i think i've talked long enough um the main reason i came on here was for it to unbox these i'll do a separate um i guess unboxing not unboxing pot and chat with me like i'll pot up repot some plants and talk or something like that but i just want to talk about those things because i've been noticing that a lot lately and i don't know i just wanted to speak on it so again as far as the unboxing goes i'm very happy with these two plants, both sellers did a great job and I would certainly order from them again. I'll um, link, they'll either be in the title or I'll put down in the description box the actual names of these two um, sellers, their websites or whatever, where I got them from. So you can go take a look if you like. But thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what plants you're buying right now. Um, if you're still going out to, I know some, the big box stores that are obviously still open for essential needs, um, have plants in them. And I know some people are still plant shopping that route. I've heard locally where I am that some nurseries have possibly reopened, um, with modifications. I don't know. Like I said, I just stay in all my plants I've gotten during this time I have purchased online. So let me know. Um, well, how is it in your area with the plant shopping if you're shopping online? Have you noticed any of these um, differences in prices online versus what you're used to playing? Just let me know all things plants. What's going on with you guys plants? So again, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys